Earlier this summer, I was in Arkansas and Missouri looking at some dicamba drift issues or what people thought were drift issues. What ended up happening is there was volatility, so the product became a gas, moved up in the air, and there was a temperature inversion which didn't allow that gas to disappear. It stayed lower in the atmosphere. And so today we wanted to talk just a little bit about temperature inversions so you understand this very important concept in farming. First of all, terminology is very important because there's getting to be some regulation around this term drift. And when we think about drift, like Brian said, drift to a farmer means it physically blew away as you were doing it. Volatility means it landed, it picked up and moved later. Brian mentioned the term air inversion, where we get temperatures not the way they're supposed to be, where the temperature down low, close to the earth, is actually cooler than the temperature up higher in the air. You may see it when you're flying sometimes. Brian and I happened to be flying this past winter, and we were flying into Rochester, Minnesota, and the pilot said, man, we've got quite an air inversion here. We're 40 degrees up several thousand feet, and then down on the ground, it was uh, well below freezing and there was a lot of frost on the ground. That's not a normal situation to happen. Okay, so normally the way this works is the air gets cooler as you move up. But what can happen a lot of times is the hot air as it's rising gets trapped. And then, especially when you get to early morning, when the temperature is at its coolest. So early morning, the air cools off down near the soil surface, but above that, the hot air is still trapped there. The problem with the temperature inversion when it comes to spraying is normally, if there's a little bit of vapor pressure off a product like Dicamba or 2,4-D, it's just gonna go way up in the air, it's gonna disperse, nothing ever happens to it, it goes thousands of feet in the air, gone. But if it only can go up, let's say 30 feet or 100 feet, or a couple hundred feet, well now it actually, that vapor could move sideways a little bit and then fall back down again. That's where we have the problem with vapor pressure, volatility, and temperature inversions. Now the thing about temperature inversions, because you may be thinking, well, wow, how do farmers know when there's gonna be an inversion? How do they avoid them? We don't see those kinds of inversions in the middle of the day. We see those inversions a lot of times really early in the morning. And so you may be thinking, well, hey, we just need to avoid that early morning spray. Well, that would be good. Uh, but the other side is the late evening sprays. And this is one where, where farmers really have a challenge. Farmers are trying to find days when it's really not very windy. In the summer, a lot of times you think about that breeze that we get seemingly all the time and how nice it feels to get that cool breeze on a hot day. Well, for farmers, they want to avoid drift. Like I said, drift is when you're spraying and the spray blows off target. So farmers are looking for days when there's not much wind, and a lot of times that means early morning or into the evening. The problem with that is if you're spraying late in the evening, well, it's cooling down in the evening. There may be a lot of humidity. There may be some dew now that holds that spray in a liquid form on the leaves. And in the morning, if you've got an inversion, you could have a big problem. So the point is, like with dicamba or any other product that has volatility, and mainly it's just dicamba and 2,4-D. So we, there is no issue with volatility with Roundup or most of the other herbicides we spray. But we do worry about dicamba and we worry about 2,4-D. Anyway, with this volatility, as soon as the product dries into the leaf, it gets absorbed into the leaf, we're good, there's no more volatility. As soon as there's rain and it washes into the plant or into the ground, no more volatility. What we worry about is when there is a lot of humidity there, and like Darren said, a lot of moisture, so the product doesn't get fully absorbed into the plant, then the air inversion hits, now the product starts moving up in the air, that's when we've got a real problem. So what I told the guys in Arkansas and Missouri is if, if you want to avoid problems, it's real, real simple. You spray only when it's sunny, okay? You spray when it's sunny, especially between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. You do that, you're home free. All right, yes, you can spray early in the morning, you can spray into the evening, but it better be clear days. You better have no real risk for temperature inversion, otherwise that's when you're going to have the problem. The other last thing that I'll point out is where were most of the problems with dicamba? They were right near the Mississippi River. Well, product is going to move to the lowest points. Okay, where's the lowest point? Well, it's going to be right near rivers. Okay, so that's why they had all the problem with the dicamba drift as you get into eastern Arkansas and southeast Missouri. Well, it's often said that farmers watch the weather 
as close or closer than anyone else out there. And here's why, because they're worried about things like temperature inversions that could take spray that lands in the right place and move it if the weather was wrong. One other thing that farmers are also watching in their fields is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this weed coming up later in the show. <music>